And we are back. There we go. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, hanging out, making fun of Nick's chair. I'm doing just fine. Don't just make fun cat of things. Don't make fun it of it. Deserves it. This thing is killing. Do <laughs> it. I told you. <laughs> The first thing on my list as soon as I can. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Man, I wish I could send you my other one. I know. I was going to say, I'm going to get my St. Jude one. I'd give it to you before I'd give it to my 10 year old, who's the one who wants it. Just that, Jerry. So, you guys are back in. It's Win It. You guys are back in game. I am going to give this to the largest portion, uh, which would be our four. Back at the table, now that the tavern owner, per se, is doing their own thing, or at least he's gone back, this gives you guys an option or an opportunity to kind of feel each other out here, find out about the stranger that's now sitting down with a hand on um, Neferani's knee. The floor is yours. Also, uh, there is a luck reroll, courtesy of Turbo Wars. Thank you, Turbo. Awesome. Thanks, so, <laughs> I am I am going to... Um, much like we stared at each other from the stage, I am going to um, lock eyes with uh, this woman okay. and just kind of... I will, I will lock eyes, look down at the hand, and then just look up at her. Is there a problem? I, I'm, I'm curious for the same question. Oh, I have no problems with you. You are exotic. I like that. Well, I'm glad that you like that, but I have no idea who you are. Oh, well, I, who I am, really doesn't matter much. I uh, overheard you. You spoke rather loudly. And... Well, I, I must say, I am rather tickled to have found you. You see, I am not native to this area, and it seems that you are. You at least seemingly blend in and draw as many eyes as you do coin. And I think you have talents, Miss... Can I roll sense motive? You certainly can. <laughs> you can try. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You're you weren't lying when you said I could certainly try. Um holy crap. <laughs> Remember, you have three re-rolls. Do you I'm gonna have to, yes. Okay. <laughs> I think, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you're just gonna roll with this one. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Abasi, you can read no. the situation. But Neferani just can't. Maybe it's the distance between them, right? Before she was sizing the room up, but now that this person is quite literally in her space, she's just not quite got a good read on it. It's sort of like if you get too close and stare at a cat in the face too long, they just look away because they don't really know what's going on. Like, is it going to eat me? <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is very much the same situation. Abasi, you can tell that there is certainly more to this character but you don't really know her intentions yet. Though she sits down and she so she shows some kind of infatuation, there is more there. Infatuation can go so far, but do you really need that bandolier of blades draped across your bosom? Do you really need a scorpion whip at the waist? Some things just don't read. Is, is she saying those things? No, this is just oh, okay. what Abasa can pick up. <laughs> okay. But you can't really tell. You think that she's just interested in you. That she just has an interest. And she continues. Do you stop her at any point? Do you say anything? I'm going to let her talk. Sure. Um, because she mentioned that she overheard us. Yeah. I would like to know. Um, I'm going to let her talk. I'm just, And I'm just going to continue to kind of stare at her headlight-esque <laughs> Very good. Uh, she continues. Who I am doesn't really matter. I represent um, a group of Osirianologists. 
Yeah, we'll say that. You can tell. It doesn't really take much to determine that she's not giving you the entire truth there. She seemed to skew over some details. Who she works for, you're not sure. But it does seem a bit more unscrupulous based on the way that she's saying it. I represent a bit of a multinational trade group. And we are in the business of acquiring many rare things, artifacts. And you see, I've, I've come to Wati to find the right person, persons or group, if you will, that could find these things for me. At a fee, of course, you would not go unrewarded. It would be a handsome price. But I see I'm afraid that I've come alone and I don't believe that little old me should be going anywhere near the necropolis. However, you seem very interested and as do you, small dwarf. You also seem to be interested. Obasi laughs slightly, almost uncharacter uncharacteristically for how he's been. A little uh, well-armed to be, excuse my phrasing, but digging for water in the desert as he motions between Neferani and herself. Well, one cannot be prepared enough. I like to think that I have protected myself and my investments. And I would like to invest. If you're interested, I I don't claim to understand where your finances actually are, if it is in copious quantity or not. And I thought I wasn't from here. You've just asked a pommet to go grave robbing for you. Well, didn't you know? Dear Pomet, that it's all the rave these days. The Pharaoh is opening up necropolises left and right, allowing for exploration, excavation, and the drawing of relics of long since past. What? <laughs> Abasi <laughs> closes his hand on the tip of the hookah, almost bending it in his armor, and then that... relaxes and goes, It's not. My problem, what the pharaoh does, or what my people do. <laughs> While he's bending the, that, I'm just going to glance around to see if the proprietor is around. No. Um, okay, because I, I want to make sure that he's not overhearing this. <laughs> Dunkor <laughs> is quickly grabbing a chair, and it's of just a few steps behind, but Jamara is also um, climbing back to the table. Jamara, as you move to the table, you'll see that this hag that seems to be draped in some kind of veil, um, removes herself from the building. Interesting. Do you follow the hag or do you move to the table with this very colorful group? I definitely want to go to the table. Okay. I gotta make my way over the table. But where's Doncor right now? He's in front of you, probably just a few steps. It looks as if he is grabbing a chair. You could exactly. potentially sidle in in front of him and take that chair. <laughs> I don't want to take Donkor's chair. You mean Donkor? I thought Donkor was on his way over to me. No, he's just informed you that we, yeah, we've we've already met and now we're going back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. And there's only one chair. No, there there are still multiple chairs left, but okay. But I it it borderline. I don't want to speak for Jamara, but it borderline feels like it's within her character to accept someone holding a chair or a door or anything else, even if it's not quite its intention or purpose. So we'll say, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll Yoink. say this. Don, Donkor is pulling this chair out and he he looks behind him uh, to, to see if Jamara is still there. And he goes, well, I pulled this chair out for you. Are you going to sit? Yes, thank you. She strides up like it is the catwalk, as if she is putting on a, a show of it of her own sorts. And as she takes a seat, um, I'm assuming that you'll be the gentleman that you are and push in the chair for her, or do you just kind of leave her hanging? Um, I'll push in the chair. Sure. Very good. Very gentlemanly. <clears throat> do you take a seat yourself? Um, this, uh, this lady with the, with the purple boots and the, the very unusual attire, she's still standing. 
No, she's sitting. She's sitting in the chair that you had originally had. Okay. So, I will be the one to stay standing, or Don Cor will be the one to stay standing. He'll he'll begin to say, I think I've sat for long enough. I, If you guys don't mind, or my company, I would like to continue standing here. As he then motions toward the, the group in Neferani and Anabasi's uh, direction, because they're, they're the ones who were with him previously. I'll, I'll break my eyes away from weird lady and say, that would be fine. And then I catch sight of um, Jamara as she sits down. Oh my gosh, you are even prettier in like close. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable, but it's wow. Hi. Why well, thank I'm you. doing all of this while the hands on my knee. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> then oh, then no. will, will notice this hand on your knee and as you're the two of you are so excitedly looking at each other. Um is it okay for him to uh use diplomacy here? Yeah, you uh, can you you just tell me what you want to do and I'll tell you what check you have to make. Okay. So he wants to he wants to find out more about the, about this woman cuz she wasn't at the table before. Sure. He, he has this sneaking suspicion that she's not going to let up any more information than she's willing. So he's going to try to convince her that okay. you know he he's interested in knowing more about who she is okay so, um it's it's certainly something you can do but if you wish to get if you feel like she's stonewalling you like she's not delivering certain information then i'll ask you for that uh, i'll ask you for for whatever role you might have to do if you feel like you want to lie to her and that's also a, another role but in this case sometimes just talking to people is just enough depending on how you you propose whatever the situation may be or how you speak to her, you may actually get more with just being honest or very derelict. Okay. So, Dancor, Dancor will look at this, uh, look at this woman as the two, uh, as the as Neferani and Jamara are introducing themselves, noticing that there's this awkward hand that's still on Neferani. He looks towards the woman and says, "You weren't here when I was when I was sitting at that chair before." Do you have a name? Observation. I said that my name is of not much importance right now. Uh -huh. I come bearing work, but I'm not sure you're a part of this. Well, you group. see. Are you? I. She looks back to you, uh, Neferani, and she seems to be posing question. And yes. You you see immediately, like, since you're kind of focused no on Jamara. Yes, my friend. What was your name again? It started with a D. My name was Don Cor. My friend Don Cor is a part of this group. Um, Very good. It seems, it seems as if I am a part of this group. Now, you, I wasn't here before when you made your introduction, and it seems to me that you're not willing to either maybe trust us, or you're not willing to divulge whatever information you're hiding perhaps maybe we can convince you um, quite the contrary in fact I am more than prepared to deliver apt information or at least enough to make this interaction go further I dare not waste additional breath or at least more so than I have to certainly I will charismatically apply myself so as to win your heart and your affections, but that's just part of my charm. And this is my position inside of my trade group. Yes. So, we have a room if we wish to discuss this, and if, if we actually wish to discuss this further, we should probably go there. The innkeeper did not seem... Or the proprietor did not seem, uh, how you say, uh, delighted at our conversation. And I believe uh, that 
getting uh, kicked out of this establishment will be uh, poor for our health. Well, um, in that in that respect, if there's um, anything to do with our previous <laughs> conversation before I left, then I think you might be right. Oh, well, it's not that often that the moment I place a hand on a lady's leg that she invites me back to a room immediately. Well, I must say I'm interested. She seems to bite at her bottom lip, waiting for a further invitation. Well, if she's inviting you, she must be inviting us all to speak in a room. Oh, that, uh, yeah. yes. Well, that's <laughs> certainly, I, than... I suppose you as well. I, hmm, uh, ground rules. <laughs> Neferani would like to set some ground rules here. I would like to discuss the previous topic, trying not to be super loud because I know that I'm super loud. Um, with a group of persons who are also interested in that, and I look around the table. Um, Would you I, like a moment? I can step away if you need to speak amidst your your friends with the letter D of Dancor. <laughs> oh, good, she can count and spell. <laughs> so proud. I can. I can count very high. How It'd be appreciative high? if you saw the size of my purse. The size of your purse, you say? Well, look at that. D for Doncor is listening. <laughs> well, of course I'm listening when anything that says profit. Jamara? That's all I come to offer, is profit. Listen, oh. talk amongst yourselves. I will take a brief reprieve. Which room is yours again? Do you know? I'll let you know when you return. Fair. I will return. Thank you. And she allows her fingers to slide up your leg and probably past your side and shoulders. And then she walks out. You hear the and clicking of her heels on the sandstone floor. Yeah, that was awkward. I, yeah, I think my fur tells the tale of that. Like, my tail is like... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the displeasure, like, cat tail. Like, that was... I think it's just low in general. <laughs> So at this point, uh, Jamara still, I guess she's not, she's still trying to assess the situation. She's also one of the newest ones to this table. So Don Cor will then say, well, this is a dwarf and this is, I want to say Neferoni. Yes. Excuse me, dwarf. Uh, my memory, my memory seems to fade me. It's a bossy, am I correct? I mean, uh, some people may have called me a, a dwarf when I was younger, but nowadays, yes, I, I go by a bossy. Okay. Well, these are, I guess, two of my new friends, and we were discussing something that might be of interest of you if you would like to join us. I would love to. I am here seeking information. I think that that would be a great thing. Awesome. This is this is very pleasing news. Neferani, if you don't mind showing us to where we might be going. Uh, Neferani would be pleased to do so. Uh, question, where was the other lady um, that you were with, uh, the... Jamara? She was different in face? Ah, yes. Yes, uh, she, yes, the, the crow? Is that what she was? Oh, I don't think we saw the her crone. the crone. The crone, the crone. yes. Crone. With an N. Okay, yes. the crone. She left out the front door. Was, do you think that the crone would be useful in, in such an endeavor? I mean, I'm assuming here, and my voice actually hushes because I don't want to get in trouble, that we're, you guys all want to go in there, right? I'm surprised she even let her leave the front door. I know. I was thinking the same thing as I was watching her walk out. What am I doing sitting here? Right, we want to go into the necropolis, right? This is... Yeah! Okay, I just want to make sure we're all see, of I'm the so... same heart in this endeavor. Uh, do we think, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure. The what, two of you what seem to wish there, to go but... to, the necro to the necropolis. Mm. Dancor looks around him as he accidentally says it a little bit louder. Um, my apologies. To go adventuring, it seems. 
I want to know more about this adventure before I make a decision. So I will um, stand up and say, then it's decided. Let us go to the room that is prepared for us so that we can talk not here out in the open and invite more weird ladies who put their hand on, on me and Neferani will not feel uncomfortable <laughs> any longer. And we can go and discuss that um, in, in a little, in more of a private space. Well, it's up to the other two. What say you two? I would like to go find the, the crone. I would like, I think we should go find the crone to see if the crone is interested in such a topic. Uh, it's been quite some time. Are you sure you can find her? Mm, I was thinking that, how long has it been? Probably not, to be honest, because it's not like it's, she just left out the door. Yeah, she she didn't exactly get a running start, right? She's, <laughs> not, she's slow. I don't think she can. Yeah. It really depends. Well, see, but, she was but going we, to we, a room, we don't actually. Know that, so. Yeah. No. Um, you did see her walk out, but it's probably been just a few moments, uh, maybe just a few minutes at most. Do you wish to go outside? Yeah, I'd like to go outside just to see if I can okay. see her. All right. Um, since this is going to take a brief <laughs> break away, we're going to go ahead and move over to Nick. Blacklight. Yes. As you have fled the establishment in hopes to not be discovered, um, where do you go? What do you do? Do you just move to the, the nearest alley? Move to the darkest spot you can? Uh, the, yeah, the immediate thought would be to get out of out of sight, unless she still has a little bit of time left on on the disguise. In which case, she might you know just be looking in case you know if she's caught out in the open. It's one um, of those things where you you feel your hex is starting to fail, and you can like peer down at your very human like skin, and it's the it's the like the pock marks of where a feather would belong, if you had feathers. Okay. So you can see it's starting to rise back up. Your your hex is failing. Okay, um, then I want to start making towards, uh, is there any kind of place where people sort of of the underground, sort of like rejects of society, people who don't ask or ask too many questions, uh, tend to get... Not, uh, not in this immediate area. You would have to go to an area. Give me just a second, I can tell you what that is. It is the, uh, the Veins, or Bargetown. Bargetown is... It's what you might think it is. It's quite literally a portion of the city that lives in uh, in scows. They basically reside on the water uh, in schooners or other smaller craft. Um, and it's like the poorest of the poors. It's where you would move to take something that you might want to fence or if you're looking for drugs, something like that. It definitely has that reputation. You muted. I assume that's that's sort of like the gray part of the map here, uh, just off the wall, in like the northeastish, just below the wall section of the city. I, uh, sorry, northwest. The north area, just above that, actually. I'll actually go ahead and I'll ping everybody. I see it. I see it. It is <clears throat> right there. Everyone should have just got pulled to it. That whole area is Barge Town. And where are we? You guys are right here. Okay, so there are like some buildings that I guess this wall is this wall manned here? Oh yeah, it's regularly patrolled. It's um, uh, up at the top. People guards are allowed to walk the top, um, and there are many patrols keeping people away from the inside. Okay, and what time of day is it? Um, it's still probably very early. The sun's still beating down, so I'm going to say that it's likely early afternoon, maybe like 2 or 3 p.m. if that was the equivalent in that, in that time frame. Uh, okay, and one last question. What is this section of city just south of Bargetown? South of Bargetown, this gray area, this is called the Veins. I can tell you about the Veins. Give me just a moment, and I will dictate that to you. Please do. Assuming that Pilaka has some basic knowledge of the landscape. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a brief tour of this place, if you don't mind. Um, this area here, if you zoom out, this is ne the necropolis. It makes up for at least a quarter of the city. This entire wall is the, ne the necropolis. Over here to your left, that's Bargetown. 
Bargetown is the city on the water. Just south of Bargetown, here, this gray area, that is the Veins. And the Veins is nestled between Midwife and Bargetown. Midwife is the next largest area. Um, it's Wati's Harbor District. It stacks block upon block with woodcarvers, tar kilns, warehouses, whatever kind of shanties that could potentially go there. It's it's your basic workers, the skilled workers that aren't quite skilled enough to really appease to Midwife or um, uh, Morning Sun, which is another district. But that's where you'll find most of your workers. Um, it's also the area that has the largest, it's, it's known for its insect population. A lot of the people in this area wear tar or pitch so that they can uh, front, uh, affront the, the insect problem. Like, they have really fucking terrible mosquitoes. Mm. If that's how you feel, and of course, if you want to munch on them, you totally can. Uh, this area oh, right Pollock here... Oh, is constantly like, grabbing bugs and... <laughs> this area here, which pretty much centralizes, you can see the way that the, the city is laid out. That's Midwife. Uh, Midwife itself is a district that is quite literally the heart of Wati. It's cradling the most of the city's temples, markets, and professional artisans. Along with the necropolis itself, Midwife is the oldest of Wati's districts, with a history stretching back to the city's founding itself. Um, if you move even further south to this very lush area, this is the Morning Sun. Uh, it is where the wealthy live. There are not very many families that live here, but those that do are very well taken care of. When you look at the outskirts, which is here, and it runs all the way along that outer coast area, the outer side of the city, that's called the Asps, A-S-P-S. -S. Um, south of here, which isn't quite dictated on this map, is your outer farms where it's primarily onions. Most of the area, uh, most of the farming in this area is onions. Um, that's because it's, well, it's, it grows copiously here and because it's also seen as a gift from Phrasma herself. They even go as far as stuffing the dead with onions and replacing their eyes with onions. Really brings out the flavor. Yeah, it does. So, where would you like to go? So, Palaga's immediately... You cut off there. Sorry, it keeps happening. Um, d uh, her first thought would be, especially during the day, skies is failing. Um, she's going to start heading through uh, the sort of, uh, I forget what this is called, the the uh, industrial shipping district. The veins. The veins, thank yeah. you. Um, You're not and far. Try yes, yes. Yeah, so she was right outside of there and would start cutting through there, heading towards Bargetown, where people don't ask too many questions. Sure. Um, you don't move very quickly. Speed is not in your natural kit as a forte. But as you break your way across, um, you keep glancing back over your shoulder. There was a particular individual that wasn't quite harassing you, but the moment that they saw you, they couldn't look away, which is quite ironic considering her situation. As you keep glancing back over your shoulder, expecting to see Jamara following you, you instead see a different woman. She's stepping out of the building, and as she does so, she reaches into a side satchel, and she draws out what looks to be a large golden tube. It's real gold. You can tell. You've had a long life, and you know when you're peering at something that is just painted to look so, and one that quite shines this way in the sun. Not many people walk around with that kind of clout and that kind of money. Would you continue walking to the veins, or would you stop and watch? Continue walking towards the veins. Okay. Do you keep glancing over your shoulder? No. Palak is trying to draw as little attention as possible. Sure. Um, as you begin to turn your head, you see that as she re um, she draws this tube from her bag, she seemingly passes it off to someone that looks like um, a clergy. They look like they might be a cleric of Phrasma, a cleric of um, any of the other, the, of the other gods that might be of this area, but they're wearing the prototypical black and white robes with veil. So it's likely that of Phrasma himself. Not really sure what's going on, but you make your way to the veins and off to Bargetown. What did you want to find on your way to Bargetown? Do you do you look for anything? Um, she may be keeping her uh, an ear out for um, for any sort of, uh, of, you know, discoveries towards her, her inclination. Um, but she also w is more than anything just trying to keep out of view. Uh, maybe look towards more um, 
areas where people are too busy working to take notice of her. She'd be trying to keep her shawl up around her head and uh, trying to cover her beak as best as possible. Okay. Um, it's not long before you find yourself passing through the crowds of people walking through the streets of Wati. Um, they seemingly don't heed your, your motion. Uh, many of them bump into you. Um, this is generally pretty typical. They are the lower class. They are seen as such, and they treat others the same way. Unless you walk around in noble garb, you are seen as less than here. Doesn't take long before you find your way to an area that is regarded as dark, or it's um, ridden with with refuse or detritus, things of that nature. And you can take some kind of heat here. You know, you can you can hide away if you'd like to. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if I have any place that I'm staying regularly. Uh, if she did, it would probably be somewhere, uh, somewhere in Bardstown, uh, somewhere. Okay. Like, uh, low rent, not a lot of questions, but uh, even just being out of sight for the time being, waiting for her, her magic to recharge would be accepted. Sure, that's fine. Um, being that you've only been in town maybe a few days at this point, you just kind of hovel off to a, a roving spot. You probably move nightly, to be honest. If you stay somewhere too long and you're not protected, and it looks like you might have valuables of any kind, uh, staying inside a barge town, you may quickly become a target. You get that sense anyway. That no place is immediately safe unless you have enough money to back it. And that's fine. Uh, you move off to Bargetown. Jamara. You have managed to exit the establishment and you see the woman waiting centrally just in front of the tooth and hookah. Mm hmm. She waits with arms crossed. She leans on hip and has her foot cast outright. It looks like she's just biding her time. A figure pushes past you, and this figure seems to be dressed in the same clergy outfit that you had seen just before you walked into the Tooth and Hookah. It's probably that of um, of the Temple of Phrasma. Okay. They seem to be clutching a, a very ornate golden tube. The tube again. Okay. Do you follow um, suit? Do you push past and look for someone specifically what are your goals now that you have these things in your forays well I quickly look around to see if I can see the woman in the that that I saw in the tooth and hookah in wait the what hold on the tooth yep, the tooth and, and, the tooth and hookah the tooth and hookah. okay yeah. anyways <laughs> so and, and I don't see her anywhere thing give me a perception Okay. Let's see what you get. Hold on. I have to figure out where that is again. I it's on the right side of your character sheet. Um, it's all in alphabetical order, so it's probably near the bottom. And it's just perception. Yeah, Jamar, you're not you're not seeing this crone. She's either blended into the audience or she's quickly made her way away. Okay. All right, so since I don't see her anywhere, I'm going to approach these women and ask them what they're doing here. So the the woman with the the wide-brimmed hat. Yes, and okay. the gold tube. Right. Oh, that that person has has stepped away. They're walking oh, directly into the tooth and hookah. Oh, she's inside already. Okay. And then I have some other woman in a clergy outfit. No, right? no. Okay. So what's happened is the woman stepped away from the table, and as she stepped away from the table, um, someone just walked past her, and you see this individual carrying a golden tube directly into the tooth and hookah. Oh. The woman that stepped away from the table was the one that had her hand on Neferani's leg, and now she is just waiting, because she's giving... Technically, she's giving you guys a moment to converse inside. Okay. And I'm outside? That's... I was outside. Yeah, you, you walked outside to try to find... Um, Sorry, Pilaka. I'm confused. That's fine. Um, okay. And I'm outside with 
not the lady with the gold tube, the lady that stepped away from the table. Yeah, you've just stepped outside to to be. I mean, you you were looking for Pilaka, but yeah, yeah. I just don't know who's with me. Okay, um, you I'm going just... to go back inside and go up with the group. Yeah, I figured you might. I figured you might just turn back around. Uh, when you step back inside, um, you are just a few steps behind the the person in the, the the black and white robes as you were watching they seem to pass off the tube to the proprietor of the building uh, it's the same Gurundi style man with very dark uh, dark skin um, tan clothing seems to be marred in bits of uh, ale or alcohol or whatever is rich in this area probably wine and you see him crack this tube uh, pretty much from the center and turn and a scroll falls out some kind of vellum or, or parchment paper seems to roll outward. Um, you are aware that this is a church man. It's the clergy that you'd witnessed moving with Seti the crocodile. Okay. Uh, Do you just move back to uh, your friends? Yeah, I just go back to my friends. I don't know if I'd bite into okay. that. Because, it's quite like, literally why? just moments know. passed. Just moments uh, passed. She sits back down at the table. And not with her, you'll see that there is there is no Pilaka. No crone. So, so the crone won't be joining us then. Yeah, you guys just have the first adventure without me. Catch <laughs> <laughs> level six. I'll just live. Um, it looks like you didn't find who you're looking for. She giggles to herself. <laughs> well, why can I hear me? You, you were, you were muted at that point. Ay ay ay. We'll get your mic situation fixed. It's no worries. So I mean, I'm I gonna look around, like, because uh, I'm standing, right? Um, before I speak again, can I uh, look around? Because I'm really worried about that proprietor dude. Yeah, yeah, of course you are. I just uh, gonna perception sure you see him behind the counter he appears to be uh looking down at some kind of scroll of sorts okay i don't find that necessarily suspicious without <laughs> other information so i will look around and um the table and say neferani has a room if we wish to discuss a possible adventure further well you did say that so i suppose we should be going then And I'm gonna, um, I'm going to approach the bar. Okay. So that, to get so that the proprietor can lead us to where um, the room. I assume I don't know how to get there on my own because he didn't really. Correct. He he didn't. Uh, he hasn't technically returned with any kind of key or anything like that yet. Um, as you step over to the uh, to the bar to to get your key or or the room number or anything like that, you see the barman, the owner of the establishment, the proprietor. He moves from behind the bar, his head shaking. And when he sees you, he said, it's, it's ironic that you say the things that you say, and now this happened. He moves with this scroll, he pulls it upward, taut, and he places his arm on the wall against the scroll, and he reaches over to the table, or at least the bar area, and he grabs what looks to be some kind of spike, a, a a pit, and with his closed hand, he basically punches it into the wall. And he does the same with the bottom, now that he's holding the bottom. He grabs his stein, and he basically slams it down on the bar, drawing the attention of everyone inside. Um, and when he does, you hear the people stop talking. The music falls, the people decrease their yammering. And it's in this moment that the call to arms occurs. Can Neferani read? Um, I would assu I assume yes, because she's fairly, I mean, she was fairly pampered. I, I assume that she had plenty of time to do things like that, but I don't know that, would I have it on, would there be like a reading skill or is that more like a, I don't know. I, um, I mean, it's, it's it's one of those things you have to decide if she's literate or not. Yeah, I believe she is. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
if you believe that she's literate, then you can read. And it doesn't really take a lot for you to determine what it's like in the situation. There is um, a certain... There's a certain amount of disgust that falls from his face, and it sort of paints the room in wide swaths. And there is a seal of the pharaoh and the church of Pharasma down at the bottom. And generally, any kind of statement coming from the pharaoh is a big deal. And as these broad swaths, or these broad swaths paint the room, it really sets the tone. Now that he's got the attention of everyone inside of the Tooth and Hookah, he says, Attention! The Pharaoh is opening the necropolis. Grave robbing is now no longer a crime in Wati. It is his decree to bring, as he declare, he points back to this, Stimulus. In two-day time, anyone may enter the necropolis. But he pulls his arm up. But before you go, be warned. There is a wall up for a reason. It is to protect you, the people of this town. Honor the dead. Leave them where they lie. And let those brave, those bold, or stupid enough to find themselves knee deep in the plague. I have to leave this here. I have to. It is decreed by the Pharaoh. He steps back behind the bar, and this time he doesn't flourish. There is no continuance of the music. The melancholy drapes and hangs over the room like a cloud. He feels dishonored in his home, and there is a subtle shake that exits his body. When you read it, it sure enough is a statement, a declaration that the necropolis will go unguarded for those that are drafted upon the lottery. In two days' time, those brave, bold, and stupid enough to wander in are capable of collecting what lurks beyond. He returns to you with a key. This is to your room. Room five. Good luck. Based on the things that you are saying, I think that you will be going inside of the necropolis. I'm only afraid that you won't come out. I'll uh, reach onto the bar and pull the key um, towards me and um, say, uh, Neferani seems to understand how you feel and I will promise you I will treat the dead with respect and come back for I have waited too long to enter these walls to do anything else. And I'll palm the key and... Before uh, you go, he says, and which one are you? The brave, bold, or the stupid? I think for a second. Neferani will have to see about that. He leans back and continues his post. All right. I turn around. I have the key. Dancor Dancor is already standing. And he's been looking at this exchange of words, but not quite listening. But he notices that Neferani doesn't quite have that cheerful... uh, that cheerful disposition that she had just a moment ago. And he says, you don't seem too happy about the conversation you had. Oh, I'm, uh, Neferani is happy. I just, he did not seem happy and I did not want to make him feel bad by being happy in the face of his sadness. I guess that's fair. Well, 
We have much to discuss, it seems, especially after that declaration. Can we get going? I look over to Abasi and Jamara, kind of with a, you guys coming? Um, I'm away. Let's go. I'm just Wolf, like, what's saying? I'm like tapping my foot, like. <laughs> <laughs> like Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Sonic the Thick Hedgehog. The Thick Hog. The Thick Hog. Oh. <laughs> Akor looks at Abasi and he says, Dwarf, what say you? Abasi, the entire time, has sat in silence, staring at something wrapped around his left wrist, running his finger over an emblem, for he shakes his head and slowly stands. It all makes way too much sense now. They've known. And if I screw this one under the mountain, the city will be covered in bodies again. Without saying anything more, he just starts walking towards room five. Okay. And I don't understand a thing he said because of his accent. And I just go, that sounded, yeah. <laughs> Everything's good. I'm with him. That was a brilliant. Right? I'm sure that was like, I'm ready to go. Oh, that was such a fucking downer. I'm a little bit confused at this exchange says, well, he seems to make sense of the situation and you're a little bit too happy, but I guess we should be going now. So I will um, kind of all but skip to room five. <laughs> will anybody be fetching the maiden with the wide brimmed hat? Or she won't know where you guys are. Well, um, she, she, Dancor, Dancor realizes that we're missing a key part of the, a key part of the equation. And he Tawaka. goes. <laughs> Why am I a key part? <laughs> well, it's the raccoon. I need the raccoon. For some reason, I don't quite trust her, but I'll go fetch her. I don't even know who she is. I'll just go fetch the lady in the white, wide brimmed hat. Do we need the lady in the wide brim hat if the Pharaoh has decreed that we can go in? The Pharaoh has decreed that we can go in, but she. It stands to reason that she might sweeten the deal. All right, just... Neferani would like to offer her a different knee than mine. <laughs> Not I. Not it. Well, I guess that means it's you, Donkor. You've got lovely legs, I'm sure. Well, I may be tall, but she wasn't quite interested in me. In fact, it was quite the opposite. I think she might be on to me, but we'll save that for another time. I'll go fetch her. You exit outside and you find her waiting. She is resting on hip, arms crossed, waiting for anyone, anyone at all wow. to alert her. Well, it seems to me that you've been waiting. You seem impatient. When she pans back, she starts to kind of read you. Like the book that you are, Dancor. <laughs> You're different. What happened? Did you get word that your mother died? <laughs> if only that were the case, she's been gone for years. Hmm. However, the Pharaoh just decreed that the doors to the necropolis are open. So it stands to reason you knew this. I want to know why. I knew this. How would I know this? Well, your timing's just too perfect. There's no way you would come to us unknowingly. That's fair. That's fair. Keen observation yet again, D for Dancor. Well, this much I can tell you. While the sands move not as quickly as rumors, they still flow. Things are said, whispered on the wind, and they're carried for quite a distance. Nothing to block it and all that. And I've heard that the necropolis may be opening soon. Did I know that there were a decree? No. Give me a sense motive. Remember, 
You have luck rerolls. I won't use them. You've got three of them. And we're Did only they gonna... roll over? No, they don't. And we've, no. we've only... Uh, remember, everyone, we can get them every time we sit down to play. Oh, okay. And if we have three and they don't roll over with 20 minutes left, yeah. you may as yeah. well just burn it until you know everything about her. <laughs> right. <laughs> there, there, you go. there we go. Oh, significantly yes. better. Yeah, that's significantly better. You know what? You don't believe her. You just flat out don't believe that's the situation. She's not really trying to lie that hard. But you just don't believe her. Do you say, like, I don't believe you. You're a fucking asshole and you're lying. Or <laughs> do you just believe that you think that she's not telling you the full truth? or any Don, Don, Don Cor may be blunt, but he knows um, how to talk to people. Sure. So... In this in this situation, he would say, "I don't believe you, not not for a word." However, what you say stands to reason, if it were anyone but me. Well, luckily, you are not paid to trust. You're paid to retrieve, or so I hope. Let's no, hope that so. your skill is as keen as your sense, Diva oh, Darko. You, you haven't paid me yet, so yet. Very true. So, will we be venturing off to that bedroom now? Unfortunately for you, it's not a bedroom with the person you seem to be infatuated with. It's a room that we can all discuss. Oh. The matter at hand. Well, I suppose that you may have misestimated my intentions. I am no, more than prepared to speak to each and every one of you. I just happen to find her quite exotic whatever you think We're exotic or not she has no business with you it seems but again that's neither my decision nor my place also yet to be determined <laughs> well to be determined or not at this moment it's not my place lead on Diva Doncor well, one day you'll say my name without the D <laughs> alright Encore <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite what I meant, but that was amusing. <laughs> You'll see me without the D. <laughs> wow, we're losing them quick in this game. It's, <laughs> it's without the D. That was intentional, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that when he come back, and I loved it. All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Energy. Yep. <laughs> You lead her inside, and you escort this person to room five. Those of you that actually arrived to this spot, you, you, this room isn't... It's nothing fancy, okay? It's its a small bed um, meant to serve one or two very tightly so. Um, there is the equivalent of a chamber pot in the corner that is emptied daily. Um, they do keep the tidiness up. Anything that you ask for will likely be retrieved, but everything does come at a cost. So, you'll find yourself to room five. Is the fruit and water there? No, that will be for the morning. Oh, okay. Dang it. If you wish for that now, I mean, you can put in a request, but that's... It's just going to kind of take it off the top of what yeah. you'd already given him. You'll find moments later, you will be guested by this woman who has yet to introduce herself and uh, Doncor. You enter inside. What does the room look like? Go ahead and sell this to me. I'm walking in. I am portraying this woman. Are you guys like, you sitting like Miss Mary Mac, 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 I'm Justin? <laughs> How does this look? I am sitting um, kind of on the window it's it's still like light out correct like mid yes. afternoon mid to late afternoon i have kind of pulled back whatever curtain is by the window and i have uh placed my um myself on the sill kind of farthest away from the door on purpose um and i am um asking um both jamara and abasi absolutely everything about their lives <laughs> And Abbasi is not giving anything. anything. <laughs> Perfect. Leaning right. against the wall, sullen, right. arms crossed, head down, trying to look as edgy as physically possible. <laughs> All right. 
And I'm being... I am charismatically avoiding all of those questions. So you're just kind of like whipping your hairs? <laughs> yeah, just... Not now. I'm Maybe undeterred, later. but I I don't... I, I, I don't seem upset that I'm not getting any information as om- no. almost as if this is a natural state of conversation for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm just like, that's fine. Maybe like, what's your favorite um, wine? Like, what do you like for wine? Right? Like, I'm just delving like into more inconsequential questions. <laughs> okay. Stonkor just entered the room with this, with this woman. He stays by the door and when you when when you step in and you sidle by the door, she hears this question answered out and this flatness as the room, um, as the room just kind of sits right. It just kind of lingers because, well, the pomet's not saying anything and she's charismatically avoiding the situation as much as possible. <laughs> so she enters in and she answers your question. She says, "Actually, there was an in-house ale at a tavern that I once visited in Western Galarian." I believe the location was called Stormbeard's Booze and Snooze. Yes. And Stormbeard had an in-house ale. A wine that was quite delicious. It was a blackberry. Have you had blackberries before? I'm going to give her a look for a second and then kind of decide that we're going to start over. <laughs> Sans leg touch and be and uh, I will... Um, put on the demeanor that I have with everyone else and um, uh, Neferani has has had them, but not for quite some time. Delicious. It's not something that I've seen growing in the desert. Unfortunately, with utmost certainty, it's not something that grows in the desert, but they are quite pricey and she seems pampered enough to have tried it. What I will say is my favorite that I found here in Wati is this uh, fruit not ripe for just chewing immediately. You have to crack it and break its seeds down. This red fruit. Um, what was that called? I think pomegranate. Pomegranate. I've had that before as well. It's pretty good. It is. And it's lush here quite a great deal of it. I like it very much so. I wish it was back home, but well, that's neither here nor there. So, on to business, yes? Well, that's why I'm here. Well. Can I peek out the window and see if the the bird lady is anywhere that I can see her? Uh, At this point, she's probably not. She's probably so far out of the way. Um, I was going to Start gesturing the room number. <laughs> it's, it's like the bumper boats, right? The bumper boats, yeah. Yes, basically. <laughs> Just stop over the Ferris wheel real quick. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Just running kids off the attract. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I represent a trade group, not to be confused with pirates, something as devious as that. We're not afraid of getting our hands dirty, but we would much rather hire the capable. There there are some things that we desire that potentially might be inside of the necropolis. I have been tasked with the duty of finding the proper adventurers. Yes. Now, you can decline. That's fine. I'll find someone else to do it, if that's the case. But I have a feeling. I have a suspicion. That you are prepared to ask for a price potentially exorbitant. For whatever it is that I ask. So long as it's not your lives, of course. I wouldn't dare risk that. No. So what do you say? Do you find yourselves in a situation where your purse has run thin? As as your water skins. Well, I would have to ask the dwarf and Jamar for this. 
My purse is never quite dry, I would say. Well, Bossy just kind of shrugs with his back, or shrugs with the back up against the wall still. Not particularly in it for money, but if what you want and what I want are in the same general area. <clears throat> in this for money either, but I am still trying to figure out what exactly I want from this area, so I'm just gonna do it for exploration sake. Well, I had you clear your throat, small one. What say you? Did it Which not one? work? No. Uh, you worked. No, it, it worked. He, he the pomet declared he's, he's not he's not really in it for money. No, I mean, uh, oh, small me? one in, in Revelation would be uh, Neferani in this. In this. Oh, the cat. All yeah. right. No, me? <laughs> Am I small? Compared to me, I would say so. How tall are you? Six, three. Okay. I was going to say, I'm pretty tall. <laughs> I'm five, five, six, so never mind. Okay. okay. <laughs> I am just, ne Neferani is not used to being referred to as the small one. So I, I kind of like it. I, um... My, pr I do have a price. The contents of my purse, I'm, you can kind of tell she's like falsely puffing herself up in a kind of, I don't want every, I don't want this person to, it's, but she has no poker face. So it's basically, <laughs> I don't want this woman to think that we don't need money. Of course we will demand a fair price for our work as good adventurers do not come free. Of course. Of course. Um, what is it that you are looking for before we discuss price? Well, uh, my employers are seeking some meager documents, nothing of much interest to myself or likely you. Uh, they happen to dictate uh, a plan. There was, to date, quite an old... Uh, scenario that was dictated on paper. Uh, parchment, if you will. And upon this scenario, uh, excuse me, uh, appended in this scenario is uh, a bit of a battle plan. And there are certain individuals that have hired me to hire you to retrieve these. Now, they should weigh no more than a few pounds at best. And they certainly wouldn't occupy much space. But if you are capable of delivering this... Um, this scroll of... Scrolls, even? I don't know, actually. That's, that's the thing. It, there, <coughs> it's a bit of a, a documentation on, on war and how to handle certain engagements. Well, you see, if these documents were so meager... You wouldn't be enlisting adventurers. You'd be looking for someone a little bit less capable. Oh, no. No, I've, I've heard the tales of the necropolis and the things that look behind those walls. I dare not enter myself. It's, this is where the brave, bold, and stupid come in. Well, I'm neither stupid nor brave, but I'll tell you this. What's the price? <laughs> you tell me. What is it worth to you? You're likely going there anyway. This is worth more than a favor to a friend, as we are not friends. I am happy to acquire your services. My employers would expect as much. So you said that um, gold, like 10 gold would be like an average for like a year. 10, 10 to 20, yeah. Anything okay. higher than that, you're entering into uh, specialty field or noble. Okay. I'm going to blurt out 50 gold each. Um, well, she's smarter than I am. No, oh, she's also smarter than I am, apparently. What? <laughs> I like those numbers, so we'll go with them. 69 gold apiece. It's like, this is outrageous. <sighs> well, you've driven such a hard bargain, I <laughs> cannot see... <laughs> 
any wiggle room here at all. I, you have it. It's yours. 69 gold per head. Yeah, well... Um, including I... the, the, the old woman who could not join us at this time. You expect me <laughs> to pay 69 gold for the hag? Yes. This old woman's going to join us? I didn't even know we met her yet. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not at all subtle. Shh. Listen, listen. Oh, I, 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 say <laughs> I, I will include it in the documentation in the agreement that I will pay sixty nine gold per individual. Now, oh, good. if you are prepared to do this, you need to acquire the proper documentation when going into the necropolis. As seen in other necropolises, you will not be allowed to go as individuals. You must go as a sellsword party. So, do you have a name? That's the best part. What's your names? Well, you've been saying the first letter of mine. You've decided to name your entire group D for Donkor. <laughs> <laughs> Big D. <laughs> Big dunk for energy? <laughs> There's nothing oh. to do with me, but. Um. <laughs> I always wanted to have something named after me. <laughs> I see no problem with this name. Honestly, no, I'm down. <laughs> you can hear metal on flesh as Abasi slams his own hand into his face. <laughs> In the Abbasi, corner of the room. <laughs> you feel a hand wrap up around your wrist. And when you pull your wrist away, it's the woman and she's looking at you. The brim of her hat is pressing <laughs> against your own forehead. She's borderline with her face asking, short of actually saying it, this cannot be true. Is this... <laughs> Are you team Big Donk Energy? No, <laughs> Big Donk Energy. Oh, that's a name that I didn't even come up with. Thank you. <laughs> All I said was you've been saying D, but apparently we now have a name. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Fucking Abbasi's lips just keep moving and no sound is coming out. <laughs> I'm just like... It sounds so fun. <laughs> Yeah, I can't help but to say that this might be a <clears throat> worthwhile adventure. You know what? <laughs> you have pulled the woolet over my eyes. You've certainly taken me for a gamble. I was such a fool. Robbing me blind at 69 gold a head. <laughs> Agram's balls, I'm gonna die poor in a loon. Um, <laughs> um. I identify with this character of yours, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> You don't seem quite surprised, but I'm sure the name is the surprise I see from your face. This is, this is gonna be like session 12. Oh, you think you can beat us, oh Elder Lich? Big Dog Energy's here to fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna die. I'm gonna be the front line with my shield. It's gonna be it's for a dunk or not at all. <laughs> oh, I just feel bad for Black. Like he has no control over this right now. <laughs> I got no him. No notes. No notes. <laughs> oh, Hag of the Wilds, you want to join Big Donk? <laughs> Too good. Well, she is bereft of words. <laughs> Very well. Uh, this turned out in ways that even I wasn't expecting. She. <laughs> pulls from her satchel what looks to be a, a parchment and quill, a uh, vial of ink, and she starts dictating the the information um, that she is um, from once forth hiring Team Big Donk Energy to retrieve the war documents. Yep. This, oh, I'm supposed to do this without laughing. This, <laughs> this is binding. 
I will... What, what do you believe is, is a, a suitable time? If if the necropolis is opening in, in two two days, you say one week's time? I, I have a question. I hope to have an answer. I hope you do as well. Uh, <laughs> Neferani overheard the barkeep mention a lottery. Yes. Yes, the, the lottery. I would... Are you able to guarantee us admission into the necropolis? Well, from my understanding, uh, based on the previous necropolises I have visited, that you should be able to to apply with oh, I... this team name, and I don't see why they would refuse. Well, if it's a lottery, that to me implies there is an element of chance for us being selected. And I would be hesitant to sign any contract where there was an element of chance that we could not finish Remember, or even start your job. I, I, think um, the, the chance, you... I think the chance is not so much that you were to be drafted upon luck. It's the chance of your survival. That's the real lottery. Let's just say I'll pull some strings. I'll make something happen. And you will be drafted to enter a place inside the necropolis. That is the real lottery, as there will be others going in. You will have first claim upon whatever is drafted for you. Um, from whence forth, your survival is entirely up to you. If you work together, which I'm not sure any of you ever have before, with anyone... <coughs> I believe you have an opportunity here to claim a fair amount of gold. Much more than you might traditionally do so by banging a drum or shaking your hips. Nothing personal. For burning people alive. And hopefully that is wow. valuable. Hopefully that's valuable just, to you. I just interrupt her and just like, can you really do that? Huh? This might have Sorry, been... go on. Continue. I'll make sure that you have the proper luck in this this draw. You'll just have to apply. Yes. Once you apply, Team Big Donk Energy will officially be annotated and allowed to enter the necropolis. I have no hand in the drawing of the location. You seem to let off that you have more sway than you initially told us with the ability to pull strings, but... Doncor. My dear, dear Difa Doncor. Everyone can be bought, as everyone has a price. Do oh. you think that even the Pharaoh is above the proper gold amount? Well, of course not. He wouldn't be where he is otherwise. That's a correct assumption. If she picks a noble, you think I could pay what? off the nobles? You fail to have one bit of an information that I will so willingly divulge. Ask away. This is your chance to pick me apart, discern whether or not I am lying to you, deceiving you. I you still try, though. don't know. <clears throat> the first thing about contracts among merchants, whether or not we can trust someone, is based on whether or not we know their name. You see, it comes stands to reason that if we don't know their name, we can't go back. We can't follow up, you, you should say, without knowing who you are. I don't think I can trust this agreement. Well, my name is irrelevant, but the people oh. that I represent is very different. You see, regardless of the people you represent, which I'm sure they're part of some extravagant trade group that somehow I may not know. If I fail here on this day, if I have misrepresented or misguessed your capabilities and I return back to where I'm from, I will be slain. That's the kind of company that I keep. And there's a reason that I've stayed alive so long. 
because I do not fail. And you would be quite wrong to assume that you are the only ones that I've hired. So they do have a lot more gold than those leading off if they've hired more than us. I think we should ask for more gold. I think that ship has sailed. It's in uh, pen nice. and ink. <clears throat> it's already recorded. Is it? I mean, you could always fetch another sheet of parchment since you've hired others. Yeah, well, I'd rather not. You see, you, you already had your moment to negotiate. She said 50, then she said more, and you said 69. It appears that you spoke for the lot of you. I'm sorry if that's not enough. You can just try to ask for gold from someone else. But if you fail to operate with my particular trade group, well, who's to say that you survive the night, Difa Dancor? The Aspis Consortium operates on many fields. Work with us so that we don't have to work you. See, now we've got somewhere. And that's a name I've only heard of. I'm Unfortunately, I'm inclined to agree that you might have yourself a deal. Give me... Uh, if anybody wanted to, to take a guess at whom the Aspis Consortium is, um, you can do a knowledge local. Yep, just a local. <laughs> Abasi has met five people in this town. <laughs> Three of them are crazy, and two of them have threatened to kill him, and he has said six words. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do know that you, you still have the, the luxury rolls if you wanted to take them. And I oh, yeah. I definitely am aware that um, <clears throat> Dancor has uh, knowledge local as well. That's that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, they're like professional thieves that operate in the, uh, the the world of hiring other thieves to do their dirty work. So they've learned they're it's it's a it's a profiteering syndicate. Is this like a multi-level market? Are we basically doing like the Lou LaRoe? Of... Similarly, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, Duncor, that's entirely up to you to tell them about that because they, they're not aware. What was that organization name again? The Aspis Consortium. So, I've only heard the name in passing, but do any of you three know who the Aspium Consortium is? I do not. Well, that's Jamara. The other two, do you have answers for me? I don't know. <clears throat> well, let's just say that all the stories that I've heard, she might be right. We might need to take this deal either way. Otherwise, no amount of gold that even I have can save us from them. And I have quite a bit. Like I said, work with us so that we don't have to work you. It'd be a shame if you were lost inside of the necropolis because of an accident. I'm going to go ahead and pass an image over to the Twitch chat if anybody would like to see this. Um, I will share it also in the Discord if you guys want to see it. Uh, this is the badge that she flashes. And it's the seal at the bottom of the document. You see the Ouroboros Serpent. And on one side, it appears to be some kind of star knife or shuriken. <coughs> and on the other, other it's like um, a phoenix of sorts. Well, wow, that's neat. Just hand me the quill. Well, it's yours. Thank you. Not often do I get backed into a corner, but <sighs> this might be the first time. Congratulations. Well, As he to sign the paper. It wouldn't be the first time for us. We're used to bending people over a barrel. So without under like without um waiting to see if she wants us all to sign it. As soon as Doncor puts the pen down, I rush over and pick it up and sign the document as well. Okay, all right. <laughs> Jamar, oh, you're muted. Luckily, I, I know that hand motion very well. 
Step aside, <laughs> because I want to fight. I am sick of speaking. Okay, all right, perfect. And uh, Abasi? The money means absolutely nothing to Abasi. The party doesn't matter much to Abasi. He just knows that he needs to be in one to be allowed inside. Yeah. So he'll walk over and without giving a signature, he'll just kind of mark an X and put a line under it. It works. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And did someone, anyone want to sign for the crone of any level of importance? The boss is still holding the pen, just marks another X. <laughs> that's down the pen. They're good. They're good. I can't believe we're marking someone that's not here. Shh, it's more money. Well, well, I guess if the Aspium Consultant's in play, we kind of have no choice but to bring her. Congratulations, Team Big Donk Energy. <laughs> You, uh, wow, what a name. I'm sure those back home will enjoy this. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for entertaining this. And this is where I'll step away from you guys, and I'll move back to Blacklight. Nick. You just got signed up for a life or death pact, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the, for for the, the rest of the evening, you guys are pretty much allowed to do whatever it is that you like. Some of you are limited to whatever funds you might have. Um, but interestingly enough, I don't know if you're going to be asked to, to leave the room at least immediately. I have a feeling that that Neferani may, might keep you around for questions or just camaraderie. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't think any of us have a reason to leave. We had food paid for. Yeah. Um, okay. Then you guys will spend the rest of the afternoon into the evening here. Um, I'm sure that you'll have food brought in for each of you. But I'm going to go ahead and pass back to, to Nick. Nick, you spent your time meandering about the barges of Bargetown, finding whatever it is that you need, be it soulless in a shadow. Um, what is it that you need right now? What are you looking for? I'm curious. Um, Pelago would be keeping her ear to the ground for any of these rumors. Uh, if any of, uh, I would assume as soon as the decree went out, it would be reaching all corners of Wati. Um, and, uh, rumors do often fly around these sort of, uh, shady spots. Um, a lot of, the, e everywhere. Um, but right now she would probably just sort of be, uh, off in, uh, off on a barge somewhere, just uh, just kind of floating along, just uh, kind of like maybe uh, scattering some ashes on the floor in a ritual pattern and doing some scrub. All right. Uh, you commit to your to your ritual, and you you realize that in your age, you have desperately needed far more rest, especially being under the sun. Bargetown isn't covered by many roofs, so the sun just kind of beats down on you here. Hell, even the Garundi people here are naturally um, very dark-skinned, are even darker <coughs> here. They, the sun just beats down on them all day long. People are even known for dying in Bargetown, courtesy of uh, taking just a little too much of whatever they happen to be imbibing on, and overheating, courtesy of it, and dying. So, you take solace with your familiar under the robes that you happen to have, but enough so that you don't allow yourself to overheat. I'm assuming that you have some kind of water skin enough to kind of keep yourself um, hydrated. Yeah, Palaka carries several water skins, just kind of a matter of course. Sure. The sun beats down and it wears you thin. You've had a little bit of a run in in town. You had to quickly scamper away and you wore yourself out. feel like you need a little bit of a nap, but you could still push on. Do you do you continue to push on past your ritual? Um well, her ritual would be kind of trying to to maybe ascertain, maybe sort of like poke and prod at the magical properties of the area. Okay. Uh is there does she see anything? Is there anything stirring? Is there anything notable? Is it a very particularly saturated magical area? Is there any um, as you poke and prod, using your 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 hexes to kind of goad the the smoke and the ash, you aren't really delivered much. Nothing like 
short of this area, which is naturally blessed, right? Even if you are right next to a necropolis, this area is still naturally blessed. You're going to find some, some latent divine energy. But what's most precarious is that for the first time since you left your home, you are... You're seeing some of the same things that happened. Your harness, your anchor to the deitic plane seems to seems to almost vibrate. It hums here. It moves with a bizarre latency. You feel like something is tapping into you again. And you know you know what that is. You know that that feeling of of being an anchor, being an avatar. You've experienced that before. You experienced it for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. You lost time. And you never can quite remember exactly what happens in that time. But before you feel yourself kind of slip away, something happens where you feel like you're you're getting ready to kind of step out of your own body and view the world from a third person perspective. The ash before you comes to life. And you don't know if it's your ritual. Or if it's something more. The ash sort of springs to life and you see the silhouettes of characters. There's no figure, like there's no clarity in the figures themselves. You just get like a sheeted individual. But you can sort of make out some of the details. One of them is significantly shorter, more stout. Okay. Another of them seems to be a bit more curvy in, in their, their nature. One of them seems to move... Um, wildly so, that seems to be very light on their feet. You don't really know whom this is. But what's wild is that three of them fall. As they step, they just kind of fade back into the, the ash itself. They dust. And the fourth, the fourth catches fire. The sheet that was draped over them seems to light and it burns all the way up to the back before it becomes hair that's free-flowing. It's moving like wind is pushing through it. The figure arches its back upward, throwing its arms down. And you can see that it was the woman that you stared at from across the bar. Her eyes pitch the only color on her, and they glow with fiery amber. Her dress burns... And before she ashes and dusts away herself, her vision seems to collapse and her face seems to rot and decay. Before you see something pierce through her back and ash burst out. As ash bursts out, she collapses and the ash falls to the ground. It was definitely the beautiful woman that sat across from you at the table. You believe that you've just seen a vision of her death. An ill omen for those I've seen. Good thing it's not me. <laughs> hmm. Uh, but still. Uh, she's talking to Giddock now, her, her raccoon. Hmm, still, there's perhaps something they can teach us, something before they go. Hmm. As you're saying this to Gidok, a voice chimes in very loudly. A woman steps forward from the back end of her barge. Clean this mess up! This is my home! You med spread this ash around! <laughs> I cast ear piercing scream. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it deals no damage at level one, it only stuns. She's gonna get a save. Don't right? chill, dude. <laughs> she does get a save. Like, holy shit, a person! Excuse me, excuse me, a save. Go ahead and click that ear piercing screen, please. <laughs> oh my god. As soon as he sees somebody, fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> I just need to know what uh, what my save is. 14? Okay. Oh, she immediately pulls her hands up. Ah! She, you hear her calling out. Uh uh, Palaka immediately uh, dips out, tries to round a corner, and then uh, is her disguise hex back? Has uh, she rested so. long enough? Likely so. Yeah, oh. I, I would assume that you would. You took some time to rest to, to regain your hex. 
Okay, that as as the woman grips herself, she just kind of collects everything, swoops out, rounds a corner, and disguises herself as as the old. You hear her scream out, and after the the ear piercing scream falls, you hear her start cursing again. She's, Damn it! This ash is such a mess, and you you see like dust getting kicked off of her her barge. She's so upset. <laughs> it's the visual for that would be she basically like the second she turned around she just like immediately turned around and just opened her mouth and there was no sound that anybody looking at her could have heard but the woman just like dropped to the ground <laughs> clutching her <laughs> perfect well you are most certain that you've seen some kind of vision maybe it's your ritual maybe it's some kind of divine calling it felt like your old life before all of this is it yet to be determined but this is where I call tonight's session. This is going to be in the end of the session. And we will pick this back up next Tuesday. Yay. So. Great session. Yay. Yay. Big yes. energy. Oh, boy. Big dog <laughs> energy. Oh True story. Oh, God. <laughs> well, any last questions before we head out tonight from the, uh, the, the viewing audience? If you guys have any questions, you can fire them off here. Um, we'll probably give you just a few moments. Um, while we're doing that, before we get to our after show, which it'll be a recording post this, um, you guys can talk about what streams you're doing. You know, who are you? Where are you from? What uh, what are you doing? Where can we find you? I'll start with um, we'll start with Jared. We'll go from right to left here. Ooh, shit! We plug in? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jared. I'm JD Scientize, and uh, I play everything. Lately, it's been a lot of Atlas and a lot of Monster Hunter because I don't know, man. I just got back into that hard like two days ago and I can't stop. Dude, I've been thinking about that. What's with that? Why is why is Monster Hunter in the water? Well, we're getting an expansion soon, but I don't know what's going on right now. I just jumped in. Now I'm a rainbow dragoon that flies through the air like a superhero and I feel like a god. But we're all about just variety, playing whatever, having fun, enjoying ourselves. I'm going to be on Resident Evil come Friday. Then I got to get on Kingdom Hearts. Oh, it's all going to be so good. I'm so excited. <clears throat> all right so that's that's jd scientize guys check him out streams all the time uh misty neferani who are you Hi. what are you doing working i'm you? imperial girl uh i stream creative uh, in my sewing you see all the sewing crap behind me um i sew and bake and do um lots of crafty shit during the day um and at night and weekends if i'm streaming i am gaming i play the sims i play rust you know very similar game i, I play everything anything that looks fun um because i don't have a whole lot of time to play games so when i do i just play whatever the hell i want um i don't care <laughs> dead games are my i guess my specialty so i cosplay i I do basically everything, and I'm your Twitch mom, so, um, hello. <laughs> it's so much fun. Thank you. Pilaka has played by Blacklight Attack. Who are you? What are you doing? Where can we find you? Hey, uh, I'm Blah, or Blacklight Attack. I don't really stream too regularly anymore. You can follow if you want. On the off chance, I am live, and none of your usuals are. Um, I stream, when I do stream, it's uh, just true variety, whatever I feel like, just like everybody, everybody who's cool. Uh, and I recently been getting into Subnautica and, um, Grim Dawn, actually. Subnautica's hella fun. I love it. I haven't tried Grim Dawn yet, but I've been meaning to. Oh, uh, dude, I am the, like, longest time biggest fanboy of Diablo 2. This is the, uh, I've played so many ARPGs that were supposed to be the successor. This is the first one that really feels like it. I know it's been out a long time, but I, like, just got into it. Yeah. I'm, like, amazing. That's cool. I like it. I dig it. All right. We have Jamara as played by Aurora Star. Aurora, who are you? What are you doing? Where can we find you? You muted. Yeah, I'm mute. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Hello, everybody. I'm Aurora Star. I am a variety streamer that focuses on the community interaction. I play Warframe. I'm actually a Warframe partner. I've also been playing Atlas because, duh. And um, I also have my own game. It's called Star Fantasy. It's a Twitch integrated <clears throat> RPG. And it's, it's pretty cool. But that's cool because we play that as well as me playing games and stuff. Yes. My husband made that for me. That's Martooth, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you again, uh, Mar, for for the subs tonight. Everybody else that, that subbed up as well, that was very kind of you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and um, last but certainly not least, Dancor is played by the man, Koeiji. What are you doing? Where can we find you? Who are you? 
Hey, what's going on, guys? So I did Doncor, I guess. Big Donk Energy, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'm a variety game broadcaster here on Twitch. I am a, also a Warframe partner. I played a lot of Warframe, but recently we've been getting into Kingdom Hearts and Resident Evil to get ready for Resident Evil 2 Remaster. And we did an entire marathon of Kingdom Hearts uh, to get ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. And I'm done with that. So now, we, now we're waiting for the games to release. Mm -hmm. So you guys can catch me usually every day at 9 p.m. So around this time, um, any day that's not Tuesday, apparently, because until we're done with this. All right. And I suppose that, uh, I suppose it kind of leaves me, which, well, I mean, if you guys are already here, you know what I do. I do tabletop <laughs> gaming and variety gaming when it feels right. Um, tomorrow night we'll be doing Shackled City, which is quickly nearing 150 live streamed sessions. Wow. Yep. Uh, closing in on four years played on this channel. Um, Thursday, we will be returning with Carrion Crown. And man, there are some people in that game. That's uh, Eloheim, DJ Tech Live, Toshnar, uh, Daniel the Demon, and Lily Vanilli. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Friday, we've got a 12 hour stream, which is kind of like a, a patron, Patreon thank you for, for supporting as much as you guys do. Uh, Saturday, I do Sounds of Silence on the Roll Forwards channel, and we'll have the movie night. And I mean, you guys see what I do. I play a lot of role playing games, it's kind of my shtick, and uh, I appreciate it. So thank you guys for coming in and following. Thank you for all the support. Um, next month, yes, Aurora, we will be doing Bioshock. I've never played a Bioshock game before, and I'll be starting oh, the Bioshock series. I'm going to be playing it through all of the month of February. Um, and oh, we'll see fine. what we get to in March. Who knows? Come back, guys, next Tuesday, uh, or tomorrow, or just all the time, for that matter. Uh, come back, and we'll, uh, we'll get into some more gaming. Thank you guys so much for absolutely everything. I love your faces, and we'll see you later. Have a good one, guys. Uh...